Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about data handling and data structures within Grasshopper. And uh, this is a really important topic because as you get into more and more complex uses of Grasshopper, it's very important to understand how data works within your uh, definition and how the structure of your data actually influences the kind of operations uh, you do and how Grasshopper is actually working. So to start this off, I'm going to give kind of a general description of the various kinds of data structures within Grasshopper. And then I'm going to go through a particular example of when uh, paying attention to the way that your data is structured comes in handy. So to start off with, I'm just going to talk generally about data. Um, if we have a single piece of data, say a number, so here I'm just going to create a number component and I'm going to create a panel. And in the panel, I'll just input a number, say zero. So that number is here. And I'm going to connect that to the number component. And if we hover over, we see that it says uh, the number contains a collection of floating point numbers. Uh, and right now, it's 0, 0.0 is the only value. So this is a, the simplest example of data within Grasshopper. We have one value contained uh, in this node. So if we want to uh, create a series of numbers um, or a, multiple, a set of multiple numbers, um, we can do that a variety of ways. Here I'll just create a copy and paste another panel and I can just go in here and simply start typing in more numbers and by default this will create a kind of uh, multi-line uh, piece of text but if I right click and I unclick this multi-line data it will actually create a list of items where every position in the list is a different number. If I connect that into another number node, now this number node contains a collection of floating point numbers again, but then now there's five values stored uh, inside. So each of these values sort of has a position in the list. And you can see what happened in terms of the representation. When we had one value, we had a single line, and now we have this um, fat line here. Uh, there's also various nodes that create uh, collections of data by default. If we want to create the same uh, series of numbers, but parametrically, we can use a series component. So if I type in series, um, the series component lets me specify a series of numbers by um, specifying the start number, the increment step, and the total count. So I can use sliders to specify these. Maybe I'll start my series at zero, I'll increment by two, and I want to create 10 numbers. So to create these sliders, the shortcut is I can just type in the number, I'll create a slider with a default uh, as a number. And the series, I'll put a collection of numbers, and if we plug this into another uh, number node, you can see here it's very similar. It just created a sequence of numbers. Now, when data structures become really important is when uh, we want to control the way operations are handling our data. So for instance, right now, this component contains a collection of 10 numbers and say we want to multiply each of these numbers by a different number. So we can call up the multiplication component and we're going to feed all of those numbers into the first operator. So you can see here that the numbers are traveling down this pipeline through these nodes. And because we're always passing collections of numbers, you get this fat line here. And then for the other operator, I'm just gonna create a panel again. I'm just gonna feed it in one value. So I'm just gonna feed it in number two, plug it into B. And then I'll create a panel here so we can visualize the output. So you can see what happened here. It basically took uh, all of our numbers, so 0, 2, 4, 6, 8 through 18, and multiplied each number by 2. So you can see what's happening here. We're passing up a collection of numbers into A and then one number into B. And what Grasshopper is doing is it's taking each number that we pass into A and multiplying each one by B. So the final, the length of the final list is the same as the length of our initial list. Okay, so that's pretty good, but what happens if we, instead of passing a list of values and one value, uh, if we actually pass two lists of values? Let's try that out. 
um, I'm gonna copy this series component down. I'm gonna change this a little bit. So this time I'm still gonna create 10 numbers, but this time I'm gonna increment by one. So this will just give me zero through nine. And I'm gonna plug that directly into B. And you can see what it's done. Uh, again, the, um, the number of values in the resulting list is the same as both lists because what it's done is it's just gone down both lists and multiplied each number in order. So it took the first number from the first list, and the first number from the second list, and multiplied them together to get zero. Then it took two and one to get two, and so on and so forth. This is a basic way that Grasshopper is set up to handle operations on two lists. If they're all in the same um, uh, level, then it's going to go down the line and multiply one by the other.